The first thing I did when I got my Valve Steam Deck, besides powering it on anyway, was downloading EmuDeck and getting a bunch of retro consoles set up to emulate them. This machine is a you know beast when it comes to emulation. It's awesome to be able to play a bunch of our games from our Steam library and emulate a ton of different consoles. And there's a lot more you could do with this thing as well. And I, I felt like EmuDeck was extremely easy to use, but I found out that they've recently released a version 2.0 of EmuDeck that makes things even easier and allows a bunch of customizations. And I wanted to check that out with you guys real quick. So if you're gonna use your internal storage on your Steam Deck for your ROMs, you don't have to worry about this part. But if you've put in a micro SD card and you haven't formatted it yet, just go to system format SD card. That way it can be used for your Steam Deck. But we're gonna go to the desktop. So go to uh, power, go to switch to desktop and we'll allow that to happen. Okay, so now that we are on our desktop, I've already done this, but I had the first version of EmuDeck on here and there was an uninstaller here. So I uninstalled it. If you uninstall, it'll ask you certain questions like do you wanna uh, keep the settings for certain emulators? You can go ahead and choose certain things if you want, uh, if you've already had EmuDeck version one installed, but I just went ahead and uninstalled it. Now we're gonna go to our web browser, open this up, and go to the emudeck.com website and download the installer. So that'll take a, a quick second. It's not a very large file. And it says it's completed. We will take a look at where it's located. Close that window. And then we're gonna go ahead and move this to our desktop. Move here. And I am using the official Valve uh, Steam Deck dock I just think it makes things easier being able to use a external keyboard instead of the uh, keyboard that's built in, the virtual keyboard. So now we have that install EmuDeck on our desktop. Let's go ahead and open that up. This will start the program, continue. Let that run through its process real quick and then we will be presented with some options. Cool, so now that we got to this point, we have a choice to make. Easy mode's gonna be very similar to the initial installation of the first version of EmuDeck where it just instantly does everything and you have no real control over how you want things to you know, be with bezels, shaders, stuff like that. But if we go to custom mode, don't worry, this isn't like some crazy advanced mode where it's gonna be tons of different settings you have to sift through. It just gives you a graphical user interface to decide how you want things set up. And I, I really do dig this. So you could choose your SD card, internal storage, or custom directory. I have ROMs on both, but I have a bunch on my internal storage right now. So I'm gonna keep it selected to that. But yeah, you could pick if you wanna use your SD card, uh, internal storage, or a custom directory. But I'm gonna leave it to internal storage. Click next. And as EmuDeck is available for the Ambernic Win 600, you could do this installation on that as well, but we're on the Steam Deck, so we're gonna leave it at that. Click continue. Now, it brings up this list. These are the emulators EmuDeck recommends for your device. You can disable any to avoid installing, updating your installation. So I don't want Yuzu, I don't want Ryujinx or whatever that's called. I guess maybe I want MAME. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything else highlighted and click continue. Now, by default, we'll overwrite all these emulators, configurations, that's fine. Uh, and then you're con confronted with if you want to configure your retro achievements. I don't use retro achievements, but a lot of people do. So this is where if you have a retro achievements account, uh, you could go ahead and sign in here. And that, that's pretty cool. So, or you could set up an account and sign in, but I'm gonna skip that. Now here's where our configurations come in. It's just a quick little button press. Configure game bezels. You could use our pre-configured bezels to hide black bars in eight and 16-bit games. And it lists the systems that it will affect. So you could click off and keep uh, black bars or on and have different you know, bezels for each system. So I'll leave those on. Click continue. Now you're gonna get your aspect ratio stuff uh, for certain systems. So this is for Sega. 
three, two, or four, three. I'm gonna leave it at four, three, but if you click on each option, it'll visually show you what it looks like. So moving forward, Super Nintendo and NES, you could change it through these different options. You could stretch it out or you know default original, uh, but eight, seven is the real SNES resolution, but this is gonna affect both NES and Super Nintendo. So I'm gonna leave it at four, three. I think a lot of us are accustomed to that. And then classic 3D games, Dreamcast N64. If you're using widescreen hacks for either, you can put 16.9, which doesn't stretch the game out. It just shows more visible gameplay area. But for the time being, I'm gonna leave it at 4.3. Anything that we mess around with here, you could change later. So like you, this isn't set in stone. Here's GameCube, same thing. Widescreen hacks are original. I'm just gonna leave it to original. Sometimes there can be graphics glitches with that kind of stuff. And then shaders for handhelds, on or off. I'm gonna leave them off. And then same thing, uh, classic 2D systems, Super Nintendo and you know NES, Atari, Sega consoles. Dreamcast, PlayStation, Saturn, N64 shaders, CRT shaders, you're given that option. And then for the emulation station theme, which you could just launch into Emulation Station while you're on your Steam Deck and just access your games that way or have them in uh, you know, custom folders and whatnot through the Steam uh, OS. But here you get to choose which default theme you want. I'm gonna leave it to Epic Noir for now. Finish up. And this should start running through and completing the installation. It says Emudeck wouldn't be possible without these all all these open source projects. We want to give them all a big shout out for their hard work. Definitely appreciate the hard work put into this kind of stuff and Emudeck as well, making things easy. So let's let this run through. Okay, so that took a couple minutes, but now the installation is complete and it tells you where to add your games. If you chose internal storage, it's going to say internal storage. If you chose SD card, it'll say SD card. It'll just kind of change to reflect. But it tells you here emulation and ROMs is where the folder is going to be for the different systems. Now, as I previously had Emudeck set up, I already had a bunch of ROMs on here on my main storage and on an SD card. But if I go here, this is where it directed me to. I can see that my ROMs are still here, so you don't have to worry about them being deleted if you previously had this set up, but that is cool. Let's go ahead and launch the Steam ROM Manager because we have some options there. Now, if once you installed Emudeck 2.0 and you click that button to launch the Steam ROM Manager and it just goes back to your desktop and nothing happens, that is okay. Just click the Emudeck icon on the desktop It'll take you straight back there with all your other options. So it'll check for updates, all that good stuff, but we don't need to do any of that right now. We're just gonna go ahead and click tools and stuff at the bottom. So this is where a bunch of different options are gonna be. Check BIOS, quick settings, save backup, and your uninstaller as well, plus the Steam ROM manager, which is what we're looking for. So we'll click that. We're gonna go ahead and click yes. This is gonna allow us to generate the app list, download the box arts, for each of our games. So we'll go ahead and open that up or expand it to make it easier to see. And here's all your parsers. So you could select which systems you don't want to show up type of thing. I'm just gonna leave it as is now, but we can go ahead and click preview. And then from there, we can click uh, generate app list. Now this could take a few moments and it's gonna execute and run. And you'll see the remaining providers at the top up here. Just, you know, be patient, wait until that is finished. And as you can see, it's just downloading all the different icons for the games and emulators and stuff. Now, once that's done, we can go ahead and click Save App List. Let that finish. Done adding and removing entries. Exit out of here. Go ahead and return to the gaming mode. Okay, so there we are. All my emulators, everything are set up to the way I chose and all my box arts are here, everything's organized. If you find games where the box art doesn't look right, you can go back and 
generate the app list and select the icon for whichever game, whatever box art it shows. Cycle through it or choose your own image that you want to use. But yeah, everything's good to go. All the emulators are set up. You just got to make sure your games are added, your ROMs and those proper folders that it told you. And that is pretty much going to be it. If you want to wirelessly transfer ROMs from your PC to your Steam Deck, I did do a video on Sync Thing that works excellent for me. Other people do it different ways. You could just use a hard drive if you want, but that's the way I went about it. So take a look at that video if it interests you. Otherwise, hey, really do appreciate you guys. Hope this video was of help. Emu Deck making it easy, right? Thanks for watching. Bye.